Hello and welcome to this short explanation of interactionism. Social action theories um, are a type of approach to society, social action theories, and there are different types of views and perspectives within the social action perspective. The social action perspective in general um, is critical of the structuralist views of society. So it does take a sociological perspective, but within the sociological debate or discussion, its view on behaviour and identity has a different emphasis and places stress on different things compared to the structuralist theories of functionalist, Marxists and feminists. Weber is an influence on social action theories because he was interested in the subjective interpretations that people hold as individuals. Subjective interpretations, in other words, how people um, see the world and, 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 and how they define the world around them and how they define their own place in the world. Um, and their own self-definitions, their own identity, um, and how it's formed in a way that's different to others. This is important for discussions of topics like social class, because whereas Marx argued that it's um, social life that creates consciousness, um, because the relationships to the property structure in the class system tend to determine how people see the world, um, they, that's an econ economic deterministic view. It's, it's saying that the, the economy determines um, identity and how we see ourselves and, and see the world. But Weber, um, and that's important for Marx, this, this idea about the economy shaping uh, consciousness and how we see the world and ourselves. Because he argues that we're in this state of false class consciousness under capitalism. So we never really see how we're exploited as one group because we're um, alienated or separated from our sense of, of ourselves as, as humans and having shared characteristics because of this division and this kind of individualistic culture under capitalism, selfish culture. And so eventually, over time, Marx predicted that there'll be this, this development of class consciousness because everyone will become poorer polarisation between the rich and poor will increase, then there'll be um, eventually class consciousness, people will realise in the poor that they're exploited as one group, um, and then they'll be able to overthrow the rich when they, when they achieve class consciousness. Um, so Weber was different, he, he said this, he, he argued this, this won't happen in the same way, um, class consciousness may not be achieved, um, if, if people see themselves differently as individuals, they react differently to being exploited. You know, some may grumble and moan, some may be unhappy, some may just do nothing and, and not respond. Some may keep going, trying to achieve mobility and so on. So this discussion about trying to understand how people see the world was very important for Weber because it would help explain whether people are going to achieve class consciousness and a revolution. Um, but he was also interested in other factors, social factors and cultural factors, as well as class. He was interested in um, status based on age, gender and ethnicity, and, um, and power and politics. So he wanted to achieve what's called Verstehen. Uh, Verstehen is this German word coined by Weber to indicate a deep sense of empathy um, and understanding from the point of view of the individual um, that is being studied. So it's about this empathy. Um, the social action perspective places more emphasis on um, understanding the world from the point of view of the individual. It's very critical of the earlier theories of functionalists, Marxists and feminists because they argue that the structure, these structuralists, functionalists, Marxists and feminists, argue the structure of society 
shapes the way we think, feel, our identities and our behaviour. But the social action theorists argue that this takes away our sense that human beings have agency. And agency is, is an individual human being's capacity to act and to make choices and decisions about their lives. So the social action perspectives argue that the functionist Marxists and feminists are overplaying the extent to which the wider structure shapes our lives. The social action perspectives argue that this underplays the extent to which we shape reality based on the definitions in our mind. If you think about it, this, this idea of a social structure outside the individual is what's central to the functionist Marxists and feminists. The functionists think the structure is good, the Marxist feminists think you know, it's bad. And that is, is, the structure is there before we're born and after we die as individuals. And it, and it limits our, our choices. But the social action perspective argues that the choices we make are only in the sense that we have these definitions in our mind. And from one moment to the next, social reality is kind of recreated. Um, so we're active and not passive and making decisions about identity and the roles we play and, and the status we have. It's partly based on how we think rather than just the limitations and, and, and relationships and the structure around us. So it's just a different emphasis, just saying, you know, we are shaped by society, but we are active, we're not just passive, we're not just receiving norms, we are also deciding on norms to follow and values to follow. Um, so there's different types of interactionist theories. There's um, interactionism, and there's also a theory called phenomenology. The main one I'm going to talk about is interactionists. So interactionists stress the importance of meanings. Um, they look at social behaviour in smaller groups on a micro scale, on a small scale. So they're looking at meanings, the way people interpret the behaviour of others. For example, after the August 2011 riots, there were two different interpretations or meanings given for the behaviour of the rioters. Um, the government described it as criminality, pure and simple. Uh, they wanted to control the behaviour and they argued for, and they ensured that there were stronger, um, harsher prison sentences for those who were um, convicted of crimes, even if they were quite petty crimes like stealing sweets. But if it was part of the riots, then the government punished it more harshly through the courts. Criminality, pure and simple, is the definition, the interpretation, and the meaning given for the behaviour. But on the kind of left wing, um, the more sympathetic um, media um, and other groups referred to the behaviour during the riots, some as criminality, but they referred to some of the behaviour as civil disobedience. So civil disobedience just implies people are not following the rules um, in society, but this could be explained in different ways and it doesn't necessarily mean that people are um, willingly and vindictively being bad. Um, there were discussions about civil disobedience as a result of unhappiness and dissatisfaction over the economic situation where people um, felt unhappy with the government, there was um, unemployment and um, there was a loss of funding from the government in the social um, and leisure um, services, you know, community centres being closed down and so on. So two different meanings applied to the August 2011 riots. Meanings develop during interaction as people try to get a feel for their intentions, for the intentions behind other people's actions. So meanings develop during interaction according to interactionists. So we develop a sense of uh, what's, what, what action means in interaction with others. So, for example, um, Becker talks about interactions between police and uh, members of the community, and he talks about the labelling of um, young working class males. The meanings are different when developed in interaction between working class males and the police compared to the meanings developed during interaction between middle-class males and the police. 
And he argues that the police have these preconceived assumptions about working class males, which means they label them uh, more as problematic and, and troublemakers, whereas with middle class males, they're more likely to label deviants as something done in high spirits or hijinks or getting carried away. So that means that meanings develop in interaction. Um, humans possess a self-concept or idea of what sort of person they are. So interactions place a lot of emphasis on this self-concept and how it develops. They develop in response to the reactions of others. So you end up thinking of yourself in the same way as others think of you. And self-concept develops in the response to the reactions of others. And you end up thinking of yourself in the same way as others think of you. So this is described by Charles Cooley, the concept of looking glass self. So Charles L. H. Cooley, um, the looking glass is an, another you know, old, older term now for a mirror. So it's this idea that other people give us a sense of who we are. So they're like a mirror um, in which we understand who we are and develop a sense of you know, the I, the identity. Um, so in, interact in interaction with others, you, you might find that you have a sense of who you are, which is suddenly changed because you interact with others and they might give you a more positive image or a new image, which is surprising in a good way, or maybe a more negative identity which you didn't expect, or perhaps which reinforces um, something that you were expecting. Um, so this sense of who we are is, is formed in interaction with others. Like functionalists, interactionists believe that roles exist, but they see them as more flexible and negotiable. So the, the functionists think roles exist, and they argue that the roles partly have a basis in nature. That is, people have different roles which are um, suited to them naturally. For example, males have a different role to females, partly because they're biologically different. But the social action interactionists um, have a different view. They think roles are more flexible and more negotiable. So the more flexible, you, you might be able to change the way you carry out a male role. You might be able to change the way you carry out a role as a male. And the more negotiable. So you might be able to come to an agreement or change in interaction with others. You might be able to change the role that you, you perform. So it might be that you, you're able to, to come to a different sense of what you want to do within the family, for example, because of the way you understand marriage or uh, parenthood, you might be able to negotiate and arrange something um, which is different from the tradition or different from one family to the next. So, for example, married couples develop their own interpretations of the roles of husband and wife. So this is described by Berger and Kellner. Um, Married couples develop their own interpretation of the roles of husband and wife. Berger and Kellner. So society is seen as more fluid. It changes because people self-organise. There's self-organisation by individuals. And so it's less rigidly fixed than in the macro theories. Society is less rigidly fixed than in the macro theories. So that suggests that social change is partly based on individuals changing their definitions. Um, rather than just changing large-scale patterns of behaviour. So, for example, the Equal Pay Act ch could change things on a big scale, but that still means that individuals have to develop a sense of, of their roles in a different way. And that might be something that stays fixed, even if the, um, the law changes things on a big scale. So, it suggests that if people understand their role in the social construction of reality... In other words, they understand how their definitions are shaping the way they behave and the way they interact with others and the way that shapes the way others behave and see themselves. If we understand our role in that process of social construction, of reality, then we are able to possibly change it, which opens the door to the idea of um, the you know, fluid or changing identities and changing society. I hope this helps you. If you have any questions, please email daniel underscore butcher at hotmail.co.uk.